Hey guys, what's up? This is Will from both Gamers Nation 1234 and The Will of Gaming, and I'm here with another review. This time it's the surprising mature Platinum Games title Bayonetta 2. Sorry this took so long by the way. In a surprising twist by Nintendo, yes, Nintendo, the company that gave you Mario, Zelda, and Kirby, have bought what was originally a multi-platform title and decided to take a huge risk and make Bayonetta 2 exclusive for the Wii U. Of course, legions of fans that didn't want to buy a Nintendo console wanted a sequel to be released on other Platinums so they can play it, but it never happened. In the sexy Umbrian Witch, Bayonetta remained an exclusive to Nintendo. Is it other companies' loss and Nintendo's gain, or is it the biggest mistake ever? Find out on this review by The Will of Gaming. The story of Bayonetta 2 is full of craziness. You play as Bayonetta, who is an Umbrian witch and uses her hair to summon monsters, giant fists, and kicks. In the first Bayonetta, she lost her memory, and you play through the game to reclaim it. But this time around, it's Christmas Eve, and while Bayonetta, her friend Jean, and her other friend Enzo, who looks like Joe Pesci and Danny DeVito's love child, by the way, are all shopping. Everything is fine and dandy until some angels pop up and start attacking the city. Bayonetta and her friend Jean quickly jump into action, and this is where your epic 10 to 12 hour journey begins. Your friend Jean loses her soul trying to save your life and is sent into the inferno. Bayonetta has only a limited amount of time to save her friend before her soul is lost forever. Fast forward a little bit, you and Enzo make your way to the inferno, which is in Fimbulventer a mountain that connects to the other world. You end up at the foot of the mountain and you stumble across a boy named Loki, who seems to have lost his memory and needs help getting to the peak of the mountain. Loki strikes a deal with Bayonetta that he will help her get to the inferno if she helps him reach the peak of the mountain. Loki isn't very popular since everybody and everything wants to kill him, which is why you have to go from chapter to chapter fighting many enemies. The story, while it may not be the greatest story in the history of video games, it is good enough story to hold you onto the story's conclusion. And that's why I give Bayonetta 2 story an 8 out of 10. Bayonetta 2's gameplay is extremely fast paced and feels really good, which time is back and feels satisfying every time you trigger it. Dodging an enemy's attack at the last second triggers witch time, and you slow down time and combo your opponents to death. Bayonetta also uses a technique called Umbrian Climax, which increases her strength temporarily. You also have Torture Attacks, which can do massive damage but to one enemy. Bayonetta also has Crazy Combos, which are pretty easy to execute with well-timed presses on the punch and kick buttons. You can do vast amount of fast-paced combos. Also, your combos change every time you use different weapons, which can be equipped to her hands and feet. You can preset two styles at a time, for example. You have swords on her hands and feet in one style and guns on her hands and feet in the other. These styles can be switched quickly and execute very awesome combos. Throughout the game, you can visit your friend Rodin to exchange the game's currency, Halos, for new techniques, weapons, and even costumes. What I personally love about Bayonetta's combat system is that it's completely experimental and you can develop your own playstyle. Since the game moves at such a fast pace, it can be hard to see enemy movements at times. You'll be probably mashing on the dodge button in hopes of getting witch time to combo your enemies. There are plenty of collectibles to find in Bayonetta 2. You can find witch hearts to increase your health, moon pearls to increase your Umbrian climax meter, and Muspelheim rooms where you can do challenges that range from simple ones like kill all the enemies within a time limit or very hard ones like don't touch the ground. Missions can be replayed over again to improve your overall score throughout the levels and same with the chapters. And it feels very satisfying when you get pure platinum on a mission. If the clips in the video make the game seem intimidating, you can use touch controls, which you point at the enemy and Bayonetta will do an auto combo on the enemies. 
The gameplay in Bayonetta 2 is fantastic and it's good for both casuals and hardcore gamers. And that's why I give it a 9.5 out of 10. The music in Bayonetta 2 ranges from orchestral pieces during tense and climactic moments to dance type music during regular fights. The music pieces had me humming along during the battles and still to this day I can't get tomorrow is mine out of my head. Your music taste may differ from mine, but the music in this game sets up this game's tone nicely and is definitely is great for a game like this. The voice acting in this game is good, but some characters are more memorable than others, but everyone does their job right. Bayonetta is always toying with her enemies, Loki is always in trouble, and Enzo curses all the time. The dialogue is good, but it isn't memorable, so don't expect a lot of people to be quoting this game. Everything sound effects wise, like has like the sword slash and gunshots sound exactly what you expect them, and enemies explode upon defeat, and it's very satisfying. All this together makes an excellent game soundtrack, and that's why I give the sound a 9.5 out of 10. Graphics and environment. I decided to put these two together because I feel like they're pretty much the same thing. So here we go. The graphics are fantastic in Bayonetta 2. Very colorful, which is what I love. Sure, the graphics aren't everything, but when you highlight your game with color, it becomes more catching to the eye. The environment in Bayonetta 2 is great and ranges from cities, underwater, mountains, and the inferno. The game has its own unique style and it's perfect for an Umbran witch to explore. I give the graphics and the environment a 9 out of 10. Yes, Bayonetta 2 has multiplayer. Tag Climax is a co-op mode that can be played both locally and online. You and your friend bet halos on challenges, and the more you bet, the harder the challenge. The halos you earn in this mode can be transferred to the story, and therefore make your life easier when trying to pure platinum chapters. This mode can be intense at times, but fun. You can play as multiple characters, such as Jean and Rodin. It's an excellent experience, and that's why I give the multiplayer a 9 out of 10. So in conclusion, Bayonetta 2 has a good story, lots of action, dynamic landscapes, experimental combo mechanics, and great music. Plus, you get Bayonetta 1 as a bonus when you purchase this game. Bayonetta 2 is definitely one of the greatest games I've played this year, and I feel, I feel deep in my gut that if you do have a Wii U already and you purchase this, that you will have a good time. I feel it in my gut. But this is just strictly my opinion. Your version of it may be completely different. Thank you guys for watching this episode. That's why I'm giving Bayonetta a 9 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching. And if you guys want to see more, you can subscribe to the channel, The Will of Gaming. And if you guys are even interested in hearing other gamers talk about games and gaming news and everything, be sure to follow Gamers Nation 1234 for more information. And subscribe, like, give us every, I mean, share us. Show us love. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.